time for practice together again. And we're working on the theme of forward extensions today. We've been working quite a bit on the hamstrings in the past few weeks, so they are prepared for this forward extensions. And remember, forward extensions brings a sense of quietness and calmness to the body. So if you need to calm your mind, look at the sequence and do it when you need it. The first poses that we're going to do is a classical Iyengar Yoga warm-up and it's three times Adamukha Virasana into Adamukha Svanasana, which both of them work very much on the extension of the sides, front, back of the body. So let's start together. So go onto the floor, bend those together, knees wide. Those of you that know you've got knee issues, you know that we can do it with a chair. Sitting on a chair, hands to the wall. Okay, so bend those together, knees wide. We extend the sides of the body. Stretch the arms forwards. Extend the sides of the body. And then bring the ears in line with the upper arms. And just stay for a moment. Keeping the buttocks as much to the heels as you can and just feel that wonderful stretch, wonderful openness. Then you inhale and as you exhale, you come onto all fours, tuck your toes under and go up into Adamukashvanasana, the dog pose. Now, Guruji, Pika Isiyenga said that your first Adamukashvanasana of the day can be with the hands slightly closer to the feet because this is the first one. You don't want to feel any overstretch. You rather want to feel the stability and the compactness of the pose. Stretch the sides of the body. Lift the buttocks to the ceiling. Now inhale. As you exhale, come down again. Adhukavirasana. Long stretch. Feel how the second one feels different than the first one. Think of the front body stretching from the pubic bone to the top of the chest into the fingertips. And then feel that sort of pull back of the hands into the shoulders and the extension into the buttocks. So back body is moving back, front body is moving forwards. Come on to all fours and with the exhalation you go up into a classical Adhimukashvanasana. Stretch, extend. This time the hands are in the classical distance away from the feet and the body is waking up. Just observe how with every other mukha the body is waking up that little bit more, little bit more. Gita Iyengar said this is a wake up call for the body. Look at the body, listen to the body, ask the body how is the body feeling today. And then last other mukha virasana. Full extension. Now you stretch your hands fully forwards, glue the buttocks towards the heels in the same moment. And then up you come in your last Adhoga Shvanasana. Remember when you look back, you cannot see your inner ankles, your inner heels. You open behind the knees, you lift the buttocks to the ceiling, keep the abdomen to the spine, stretch the arms. And then inhale as you exhale, you do your last Adamukha Virasana stretch. And then sit up and we come to standing. Now if you need Blocks for your hands for sun salutations. You, you get your blocks. I'll just show. You place them in front of you and we'll use them if we need them. Okay, so let's do two slow sun salutations together. Surya Namaskara Sanas. And the whole idea of Surya Namaskara Sana is also to wake up the body and to also bring quietness to the mind. So, and we, we want to also wake up the mind. Calm mind, but alert mind. The dull mind must become active. Place the hands in Namaskarasana. Stand with your feet firmly in Tadasana. Inhale, take the hands up to the ceiling. Exhale, hands on the blocks or on the floor underneath your shoulders. 
We're not going to go down all the way in Uttanasana because it's a forward extension. Then bend the knees, place the hands firmly and step your right leg back and your left leg back into Adamukashwanasana. Stretch. You've already had a beautiful warm up with Adamukashwanasana. So now you can fully engage and immerse yourself into the pose. Feel the hands on the floor as much as the heels are reaching for the floor. And then inhale, you go on an exhalation into plank. Abdomen well to the spine. Stretch into your heels. And then lower your thighs towards the floor as you roll your shoulders back and you go into your Urdhva Mukha Shvanasana. Looking ahead of you. Shoulders well back. Inhale back to Adamukha Shvanasana. Heels down, stretch. And then you bend your knees, you look forwards and you step or jump your feet together. Look ahead of you, hands on the blocks or on the floor for a forward extension. Inhale, arms up. Namaskarasana, Tarasana. Get your breath. Namaskarasana, inhalation. Forward extension. So today we're not interested in full Uttanasana. We want to extend the chest forwards. From here, blocks away, if you were using them, you are bending the knees, hands to the floor, and step your left leg back, right leg back. Abdomogashvanasana. Downward facing dog pose. Shoulders away from the ears. Front thighs away from the chest. Inhale and exhale, Palakasana, plank. Extend into the crown of the head. Keep the abdomen to the spine, front ribs to the spine. And then Urdhva Mukha Shvanasana. Inhale, Adha Mukha Shvanasana. And then you bend your knees and you step or jump into concave spine Uttanasana. Now remember when you come up, a very good instruction here is move your inner knees back to give you the stability to come up. Namaste. Tarasana. Now you need to get a strap. Sutta Parangustasana 1 and Sutta Parangustasana 2. So let's all, well, let me quickly demonstrate so that you know where you're going. The strap will be once again over the ball mark of the foot. We've often done that. And you are going to hold high up and then lower the elbows so that you can bring the chest in. So we'll stay now Sutta Parangustasana Bringing the leg over, and then we're going to go into Sutta Parangustasana 2. And if you need, you can rest the elbow full poses with the arm fully extended. So we'll go into these two poses together and place the strap over the ball mount of your right foot. Hold high up on the strap. In the beginning, it's always a good idea to have your left leg bent, especially if the hamstrings are tight. And now drop the elbows to the floor, shoulder blades in, and extend your left leg. If your right leg starts bending, keep the left leg extended. Now, can you bring that left foot closer to your head, but the thigh away from your face? Roll your uh, right hip down to the floor and in the direction of the, the inner left foot. Get that, that little picture in your mind. From the right hip down in the direction of the inner left leg. And can you bring that leg closer to you? Now from here, we take high up on the strap and we hold both straps with the right hand. 
You are going to place your left, uh, left arm for today. Let's put it on the left thigh to pin that hip down. Inhale, as you exhale, you take your leg over towards the right side. As I said, you can drop the elbow if necessary. Otherwise, keep that arm fully extended. Abdomen rolling from right to left. Right hip rolling towards inner left leg. Extend into the ball mounds of both feet. That helps so much with that inner extension of the body. And then exhale with the inhalation, bring the leg up. And you're going to swap the strap over onto the left leg. Onto the left foot, onto the ball mound of the left foot. Hold with both hands, right leg is bent in the beginning, and you bring the elbows to the floor. And then you extend your right leg, and you can now decide, can I bring that leg a little bit closer to my face as I bring the thigh away from me. So the foot is coming closer, but the thigh moves away, and a very active right leg. Left hip rolling to inner right foot, inner right ankle, and gradually you're releasing that hamstring beautifully. And then you hold high up on the strap, right hand on the left, uh, right leg, take the left leg over towards the left side, roll the hip in the direction of the inner right leg. Drop the elbow to the floor if you need to for stability. Otherwise, keep the arm fully extended. Extend into the ball mounds of both feet. And then exhale. Inhale. Up you come. And both legs on the floor. Just relax in a moment of super... Oh, actually, Shavasana. Just have a brief moment of Shavasana. Then you bend the legs and you roll over to the right side and we come up to standing. We're going to do a pose that we've been working a lot on in the past few days or the past few videos and weeks. Um, and it's our Tarshvottanavasana. Now you don't need to be at the wall, but you need to at the back a bit. You need to be at the back end of your mat and just watch what I'm doing here. Today the whole theme of Parshvottanasana is extension. So I'm not going to go down into the final pose. I'm stretching and I'm reaching. And I'm reaching as far as I can. And I keep my ears in line with my upper arms and then we are now up. And we're going to change the sides. So it's that extension in the sides of the body. Stand at the back end of your mat. Parasana. Extend with your fingertips already. This is the extension on its own. And now you take your right toes out slightly to the side. And you step your left foot well forwards. Right heel is to the, uh, is to the floor. And remember, the toes must not point out to the side, otherwise the hip opens up. So the toes as forward as you can. And the hips are level with the front edge of the mat. I take my tailbone in both legs for a moment. Just put the hands on the hips for a moment. Feel how you push into the back right heel and into the ball mount of the, the left foot. So you anchor your two feet. Bring the left hip, uh, right hip forward, left hip back, arms up. In, I'll do a little back bend here. Tailbone in. Exhale as you extend forwards. And as you extend forwards, you really stretch your arms. Crown of the head is forwards. Lift it back, right hip forward. And stretch with those arms. Get the size of the body extending, extending, extending. Extend one more moment here. Now inhale, bring the arms up. Arms to the side. Bend your left leg and step forwards. Take your breath. And then we step once again to the back end of the mat. 
And you are now going to take your left toes out slightly, the heel stays where it is, and step your right leg well forwards. So once again, a, a good extension, the legs are not too close to each other. You're pulling the right leg into the hip, left hip forwards. Lift the chest, feel the two feet firmly onto the floor. Both legs are working evenly. You shouldn't feel as if the right foot is becoming light here. There should be equal, equal weight on both legs. Inhale, up, little back bend action here. Exhale, extension, extension, and as you extend, you extend into your fingertips. Right hip back, left hip forward, crown of the head extending, reaching, reaching, reaching. Quiet, watch what the breath is doing. And then inhale, look up, and step forwards, and get your breath. Okay, so now it's time to get your two blocks. You will know if you need a chair for your hands on Trasadita. I think most of you should be fine with two blocks. So we stand in Tadasana. Get your blocks in the middle of the mat, facing each other. Now you keep the hands on the hips, get the thumbs close to each other. Bend the knees and step or jump your feet apart. Toes are pointing forwards. Inner ankles are lifting, inner arches of the feet are lifting, outer edges of the feet firmly to the floor. That same little back bend action here, look at the ceiling, then extend forwards, reach forwards with the chest. Bring the hands on the blocks under the shoulders, so make sure it's under the shoulders, you have your complex spine action here. In this moment you can really activate the legs. Lift the buttock bones, lift from the back of the knees to the buttock bones and now walk your blocks forwards. Forward, slide them until the ears are in line with the upper arms and you have that wonderful feeling of the entire body extended. Make sure that the front ribs are still to the spine, abdominis to the spine, in and up. And reach forward with the fingertips but still maintain space between your shoulders and your ears. Take three full breaths here. Then you bring your hands under your shoulders and you can just jump your two feet together Hands on the hips, stretch the spine, in our thumb up. Now this is the point where you can do your shishasana, your headstand. So stop the video, do your shishasana with care and thoroughly. And I'm going to proceed now to the seated forward extensions. So we are going to need a chair. And you are going to need, to need something to sit on. It can be a folded blanket or it can be a foam block, whatever you've got. And we are going to proceed to Yana Shishasana. So I'm going to just show you how it's going to work here. So from seated in Dandasana, I'm going to take my leg out to the side. Knee close to the floor as much as I can, and you support the knee if you need to. And from here, we're going to extend the arms forwards and stretch. So that same extension feeling that we've been working on continues in our seated forward bends. Okay, so you make sure that you've got a folded blanket or a foam block to sit on. And you just sit first with your legs in Dandavasana. Take your hands and scoop your buttock fish back. Sit upright. Roll the shoulders back. Make sure that you're extending into the ball mounts of the big toes. Back, back of the knees is open. Take the hands up into Udbhastasana. Stretch. Lift. Lift yourself out of your hips. Then hinge from the hips. And you're going to take your hands onto the seat of the chair and just press that seat of the chair forwards, lift up, and 
and then bring the ears in line with the upper arms. So you focus on the extension of the front body, not a bending of the back body. There should be no strain in your lower back. Just stay there for a few moments. Now you've got the feeling, so bring your chair back. Now, Yamashishasana. Bend your right leg. Take that light right foot to the inside of your left leg. And you aim to get your right knee to the floor as much as you can. If it can't happen, you either support your knee if there's issues with the knee, or you know that you need to sit a little bit higher. Now sit upright. Face your chair. Just do a little gentle twist towards your left side, just to wake up and open up the body. Come back to the center. Inhale, take the hands up to the ceiling. And then exhale, hinge from your hips. Push your seat of your chest forwards. Extend. Lengthen the sides of the body. Lengthen the sides of the body. Now you keep on going with your pose. I want you to think of rotating your abdomen from right to left. Stretch the two sides of the body evenly. Keep the buttocks firmly to the, to the support. And eventually, ears in line with upper arms. Bringing the torso more and more over the straight leg, the left leg. And then inhale. Lift the arms, Utvahasana Sala, so that you maintain the space in your spine. Bring the hands down. Back to Dandasana. And bend, I place my hand behind my left knee and I open up, bending that knee and support the knee if, the, if, if it needs to be supported and sit upright. So a little twist towards the right side, just to get the abdomen and the torso already in the habit to be over that straight leg. Come back to center, arms up to the ceiling, lift, extend, stretch. Reach for the chair and gradually start pushing that chair away from you. Moving the abdomen from left to right, the chest slightly from left to right to have a straight torso over your right leg. Keep on stretching into the ball mount of the right foot. Ears in line with upper arms, body extending from the pubic bone to the top of the chest, to the crown of the head. Arms up to the ceiling to lift you and release. Both feet forwards and the chest is still there for you. And we're going to proceed into a pose with a wonderful name, Tri Anga Mukha Eka Padapashimottanasana. So if it's impossible for you with a knee hip issue, you repeat the previous pose, Yanushishasana. So what I do now, and we can uh, you can just watch, I take my leg into Virasana and I move my support slightly over towards the straight leg side and from here we're going to proceed exactly in the same manner of extending forwards. So let's do it together. So you sit in the middle of your support in Dandasana. Sit up front, shoulders back. Take that right leg into Virasana so you bring the toes back and the body, the, the, the foot close to the body and then you take your hand and you just shift that support so that it's only under the straight leg side. That helps with balance. Now sit upright and if you still feel imbalanced, I want you to think of rolling both inner joints down to the, to the yoga mat, to the floor. So that will also help you to, to pin your body and to keep it upright. Then take the hands up into Uttvahastasana Hinge from the hips forwards you go, hands on the seat of the chair and extend. Now keep on extending into the ball mount of the left leg, sides of the body going over towards the, the front, towards that leg, stretch, stretch, stretch. Lift from the abdomen up to the top of the chest. So from the pubic bone to the top of the chest. 
Keep on rolling your inner left leg to the floor to pin you down, to get stability. And then exhale with the inhalation, arms up, hands down, and release that leg. And just get the support in the middle again and sit on your support. Evenly. Now you're going to take the left leg back into Virasana and shift the support over to the straight leg side. Remember the action of pinning that, especially the inner right leg down to the floor now to get the stability. And the left toes are pointing back, sit upright, stretch arms up to the ceiling, hinge from the hips. And into your forward extension, calming the mind, calming the brain, bring life to the inner right leg, stretch into the sides of the body, keep the body contained to the spine. relax, be there. And then stand well on your two feet as you lift your pelvis, take the block away, lengthen the spine vertebrae to vertebrae and place yourself in your Shavasana. This is the point where I leave you because I want you to be in your Shavasana for as long as you need it. And just think of that calming effects of the forward bends, forward extensions. And I leave you with this until we practice together again. Namaste, yogis.